morning. Today is November 16th and I'm actually on a work trip in Shanghai. I thought I'd vlog today and share it with you guys because today's kind of going to be a packed day. I have lots of meetings really spread out during the day. If you're new here, my name is Evelyn. I'm a tech project manager based in Beijing and I work for one of the big techs in China, infamous for their intense 996 work culture. So today I want to show you a realistic work day in my life. Let me know in the comments if you think this is intense. I just took a shower. I think I'm gonna head to breakfast now and uh, come back and start my first meeting. When I first came back to China, I actually wanted to live in Shanghai instead of Beijing. I'm really glad it turned out the other way around, but Shanghai is still one of my favorite cities in the world. Every time I come to Shanghai, I always get a shock that Shanghai feels so much more developed than Beijing. Rent is less expensive here and work-life balance is in general better, but I think at this point I'm in love with Beijing. Um, there's more character in the hutongs and I feel like people, especially from outside of China, select themselves into Beijing because you're almost forced to be more in touch with the local culture there versus in Shanghai, it's much, much easier to live in an international bubble and experience an almost sheltered life in China. It's almost 10 o'clock now. I'm getting ready for my first meeting and then I'll go to the office to have another meeting. I always have a million tabs open on my laptop. This is what my calendar looks like. Usually Wednesdays are my busiest day. Talk to you later. Bye! sick very very easily but this morning i tried to film on the dd and edit the photos i took earlier to post on instagram oh my god i hope this is okay i'm always so nervous when i post on instagram okay this is like torture i'm posting it by the end of the car ride i was ready to throw up there's still seven minutes until i get to the office and the meeting starts in 10 minutes The tech company I work for really tries to be like Google and they provide breakfast, lunch, and dinner at the office for all employees. But in my experience, despite hours being significantly longer and pay being significantly less, the benefits at Chinese tech companies are also far worse than the more mature tech giants based in North America. For example, right now I only get seven days of pay time off per year. Although the number of PTO days does go up as you serve more years at a company, when I worked in Chicago, I had 20 days of PTO straight out of college. I reserved a meeting room for some peace and quiet because sometimes people would just like take calls out like in the open office space and it's really hard to concentrate when there are people talking loudly around you so uh, I just try to find my own little corner when I can. I have two main tasks in the afternoon. One is to figure out how reports are produced for a music streaming service, to read some documents and understand a project that enables brands to use music more easily and think about how to communicate that value proposition to product and engineering teams. So I just came back from coffee with a colleague. She's based in Shanghai, so we haven't seen each other for a while. Uh, we just caught up on projects we've been working on and uh, now we're back to reading more documents. I don't usually spend this much time at the office. As you guys might have noticed, most of my work is consisted of meetings and things that I can do on my own. So when I'm in Beijing, I usually only ever go into the office when there's something specific that requires me to go in. It's six o'clock, I'm ready to pack up and go home. About 8 p.m. now, and 
I'm finding a spot to take a call with a co-worker based in the UK. This meeting was supposed to be at 5.30 p.m. but my colleague had to move it back to 8 p.m. He was really nice about it. He was like, you know, you don't have to do this. But I was gonna spend the night working anyways. I really enjoyed this meeting but thinking back, I also feel a bit guilty for having agreed to do it in my evening time because it sets a bad example that having meetings outside of Chinese work hours is okay. Like me, many of my colleagues have to work across time zones and whenever there are time zones that are difficult to bring together, Chinese colleagues always volunteer to have meetings at 10 or 11 p.m., sometimes even at midnight. I personally really want to change this and show that it's okay to say no. My own team from overseas are extremely supportive of that, but at the office, I often overhear people comparing how late they had meetings until the night before or how late they had worked until. And conversations like these always create a huge amount of stress and anxiety for me because if I'm the only person who says no to late meetings, would that make people think that I don't work hard enough? And in performance reviews, how will I ever measure up to my colleagues who would work 12 to 16 hours a day and volunteer to work on the weekends? This phenomenon is called Neijia, evolution where people, especially in the tech industry in China, work unreasonably long hours and experience burnout for fear of appearing lazy in comparison to others who work equally long hours for the exact same reason. This is also the origin of 996, where tech workers are on the grind from 9am to 9pm, six days a week. Just finished a call. Um, I'm gonna quickly rent my room, change, and then try and work out. I haven't done that in such a long time. Um, hopefully, hopefully that'll happen tonight. I had a lot of ambitions for the night. I wanted to finish editing a video and plan for my cookie business, but after the evening call, I felt so drained that none of those things happened. I felt unproductive, I was disappointed at myself, and was very frustrated at not being able to move my own projects forward. Even this meeting at midnight, I had the option of not attending it, but I was scared to take that option because I didn't want to be seen as slacking off. In the grand scheme of 996 in evolution in China. I feel like one of the lucky few who have teammates who are understanding and protective of me. And even I feel the peer pressure to appear busy, to overwork, to reach a point of burnout and still feel like I have not done enough. There are much more unlucky ones who don't have nights or weekends or even time to think of a way out of this vicious cycle. I think 96 and Evolution are the reasons why I never considered coming back to China in the first place before COVID gave me no other choice. But I also made the choice to stay in Beijing, at least for now, because I see hope to still pursue my passion, to thrive and to make a change. I once decided to be vulnerable with my parents and tell them how I really want to be out of the corporate world because I feel trapped in the involution. To which they said, you should be more grateful to your company for you know everything they've given you and make your fair share of contributions. I was very sad initially because I had expected them to just say, you know, we feel you and we are supportive of you no matter what you do. But they did make me realize escaping evolution is not a simple matter of saying no. Without my company, there are many things I would not enjoy, like fancy hotel rooms, breakfast buffets, and more realistically, a steady income or even a means to survive in Beijing. Not to mention saving for my retirement. But like I said in the planning for 2021 video, uh, a point with which my, my parents severely disagree, is that I can't make anyone I love happy if I can't be happy myself. So nowadays what I'm attempting to do is breaking down the problem at hand and think instead of, oh my gosh, there's no way to escape evolution because otherwise I would not have a way to survive. How do I really just do what makes me happy and still find a way to support myself? Knowing these things gives me the confidence to say at work that I'm burnt out when I feel that I am. So <laughs> what I'm trying to say is if you are a part of 996 in evolution and feel trapped, perhaps one way to start getting yourself out of it is to really think about what makes you feel trapped and break down the problems. If you're considering moving to China and you are not sure how to deal with the 996 work culture, then 
maybe this video actually gives you a little hope that it's not inescapable. I think in general, I'm a very optimistic person. And I think we're all empowered to make a change. Not by yelling at your boss or saying fuck you to society, but by being a little kinder to yourself and by carving out a small amount of time each day to do what makes you happy. And with that, I hope you take care and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye! Teach me music, teach me love